Hello, I'm Amy Walker. Is I'm Amy Walker. Amy Walker, in it. Tight one. Hello, I'm Amy Walker. I'm an actress most known for my accents. And today we're gonna look at some British accents in films. She will prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and fall into a sleep like death. This is Maleficent, directed by Robert Stromberg in 2014. And we'll be looking at Angelina Jolie's English accent. A sleep from which she will never awaken. Awaken. That urn nails it. Two things there that people often miss when they're doing this sort of an accent. It can be a tendency to go awaken. In America, we'll take that E and we'll just make it an I. That I in this accent becomes uh. Awaken. And then you heard that bit of an aspiration, that sort of an H breathy sound on the K, and it gives it this awaken. I had wings once, they were stolen from me. Stolen from me. From. Stolen from me. You can. You can say stolen from me. That works. Or you could say stolen from me. Were they big? So big they dragged behind me when I walked. When she says walked, that's really excellent. The A, L, A, H, A, W, all those things that in American are ah, they're all different in English accents. So we've got walked and it's very long. What people have a tendency to do is go walked or something very tight and odd. Royalty, nobility, the gentry, and how quaint. Even the rap. Even the rap. Oh. I had high expectations for this RP, or received pronunciation. It's called received because you're not born into it. You have to learn it. You have to be educated. I have a few theories as to why so many villains in Disney movies and beyond have this received pronunciation accent. And for one, the tones you get to use and play around with are just deliciously good fun. It's as if you really don't care what they think of you. But also it sounds extremely educated because you can't get it unless you are educated into it. And then the stillness of power. Good, then I'll inject them. Yeah, and I'll find a spot to get rid of the body. All valid ideas. This is Ocean's 13, directed by Steven Soderbergh in 2007. We're looking at Don Cheadle's Cockney accent. That's the rules for someone who understands the rules, which Bank don't, because he already broke them. So he don't get the chance. Where to start, really? Don Cheadle's a wonderful actor, but this is a bit of a mess. Don't. The resonance for this accent's really down in the gutter. It's down in your mouth, it's down up in here. Don't. You're going to take that tongue, and the D is not going to be a D like this, it's going to be D. Do, and it'll be don't. Now this polymer reacts to ultrasonic pulses. When you say ultrasonic, ultrasonic, that's gonna have a like more of a W to it than an L, and it's gonna be forward in the mouth. But it's not metallic, so the compass is on the table while detected. Sometimes when people do a glottal catch or a glottal stop, it's a bit extra. So, but it's not like it's sort of a double, but it's not instead of, but it's not. Not is a really open sound, oh. Now your Cockney accent is really a working class East End thing. It's, it's really chewy. The resonance is still high, but it's also really forward. It's like it starts up here and then it lands down in here. I can't leave. I'm, Why so, are you so, I'm sorry, a... ask somebody else. Ask Livingston. Such a wowzer. Wowzer. Look, I've done research. Positive messages get through. I've done research. Positive messages get through. So I've done, it's gonna be that D, done, and it's gonna be resonating up in here and landing down in here. Research forward. Positive, it's gonna be oh instead of positive back here for the States. Positive messages get through, and then you're not gonna put a TH because why put TH when you can just put an F? The tricone optimizers that feed into the nipple sleeve receivers perforated their lubricating bladders and began tension against the sidewalls. Uh-huh. I think he's saying perforated their lubricating patterns or something. Perforated. It's just living so middle in the mouth. 
and then the glot all stops so leaping out at you and just not really doing what they're meant to do. Where's that put us? Oh. Cattled. Cattled versus cattled. I think this is rhyming slang, which is a whole world of a language. Cattled would be short for cattle truck, which rhymes with another word you can probably guess. His union paymasters have called a strike deliberately to cripple our economy. This is The Iron Lady, directed by Phyllida Lloyd in 2011. It stars Meryl Streep as Margaret Thatcher. Teachers cannot teach when there is no heating, no lighting in their classrooms. And I ask the right honorable gentleman, whose fault is that? Oh, oh. Margaret Thatcher had a lot of flack in the beginning of her political career about the lady doth screech too much. So the way that she'll that, you know, really screech it a bit and she's up in the higher tones and she really gets there was something for Margaret Thatcher about the way that she talked through her teeth. But it's absolutely dead on. When did I lose track of everyone? Where did I lose track of everyone? The way that the age just sits in her face track of everyone you still have the teeth and you still have the voice but this is after she's had vocal training to lower her voice and all that is in their plus age so it's gone even lower and you just really feel the weight of her age here yeah. when japan attacked pearl harbor did america go cap in hand and ask tojo for a peaceful negotiation of terms terms did America go cap in hand? This is after she's had that vocal training and she really had a lovely warm tone in her voice after that. But she's also got that sharp way that Margaret Thatcher did emphasize certain consonants at different times. Did she turn her back on her own citizens there? Because the islands were thousands of miles away from the mainland United States, no. No, no. The way that she uses her voice to carve out that grounded, powerful tone and the consonants that make it sharp and important and listened to. And that, to me, is my favorite. And that's why Meryl Streep, <sighs> such an inspiration. Hello. Mrs. Hillard, I presume? This is Mrs. Doubtfire, directed by Chris Columbus in 2003. We're gonna look at Robin Williams as Mrs. Doubtfire. He's doing kind of a, a slight Scottish accent, maybe a little bit Edinburgh, and um, it's not like a re Glasgow hard Highland accent. Pierce Brosnan even says later in the film, it's a bit muddled. So it's kind of set up to be its own creation, which I think Robin does really well. You know, when you say Doubtfire, it feels like it should be in a wee bit of a Scottish accent. So it's quite soothing the tones that he's chosen. Euphigenia Doubtfire. Euphigenia Doubtfire. In Scottish, you've got like this really soft, flutter of an R you can do. And it's really soothing the way he's got it. It's like a wee flick. Don't fire. Are you wearing bug spray? Oh, Mary. Oh, it's quite all right, dear. No offence taken. I was a little liberal with the atomizer. <laughs> so it's really a hybrid accent. It's got some British in it, like uh, a little liberal rather than a little liberal. In Scottish accent, you usually take down that short I sound, the which we would say I, like little, and it would become little. All right, everyone. It's time to expand your minds. It's Homework time. All right, everyone, it's time to expand your minds. That's all great. It's homework time. That O, oh, that's more Scottish than uh, an O that you'd have in, a, in an English accent. How about you, Mrs. Dalfire? Oh, you wicked, wicked man. Isn't there enough flesh here for you to feast your eyes on? There's another example of the hybrid. Wicked. That's a British I with a Scottish ick. So rather than wicked, it's wicked. When you're doing a, a hybrid accent or, or something that's lighter, you really get to choose what bits feel right for the character to hold on to. I'm calling in regards to the ad I read in the paper. That extra glottal catch there, paper, that's very classic 
Scottish. There are lots of glottal catches, lots of glottal stops in Scottish accent. And one of the things that can happen for Americans trying to do British or Scottish is they're trying to put in a few extra. That catch that you want to put in when you're meaning to say paper in English and you say paper, save it and put it in when you're doing Scottish. Hello. Hello. Not quite sure what that is. Actually, um, hello would be more Scottish. Hello. Where would that be from? Ooh. It's from, from Robin Land and then it'll settle into its character as the scene progresses. This is Bridget Jones's Baby, directed by Sharon Maguire in 2016. We're looking at Renee Zellweger's English accent. She's originally from Texas. My birthday actually began the way of all my birthdays. One thing she's doing really well here is actually so this is a little bit different to a glottal stop. I call it a glottal catch, actually, actually. It's a subtle thing that a lot of Americans miss when they're doing a British accent. If you just said, actually, and you got all the placement right, but you didn't do that catch, it's just not quite there. This is one of those things that if you're British doing an American accent can be a challenge to take out and just say, actually, and not actually. The truth was that by now, I thought I would have had a little baby to love with the chiseled jawed love of my life. Chiseled jawed. That's good. Or is a vowel that can be challenging for Americans to do in English because we don't have it. We don't say or, we say ah. But here you get to say or. It's much more forward in the mouth and this is more of a standard British accent you could say, sort of middle class. Isn't there some sort of statute of limitations about the number of sodding candles on a cake once you get to a certain age? It is possible to use the glottal catch too much. Sort of, you don't need it there, just sort of. Certain, it can just be certain. So when you get to a certain age, some sort of statute, statute, it would be there. That is something that a lot of people do, is just put in a few too many British, it's not British, it's just British. I need you to see what Reuters are saying about the attacks on Ramallah. One thing that can be challenging is the difference between the American schwa, uh, a standard American uh, and then the British uh. The difference between Ramallah and Ramallah is that slight difference, or like American versus American. <laughs> the last barren husk in London, and of the two loves of my life, one is married and the other. Dead. One thing she does really well here, there are so many different ways to pronounce consonants and England loves them. And we've got dead. And that D, that softer D, she really nails. It's one of those subtleties that a lot of people miss. Like in American, in a standard we'd say dead, not even finish it, dead. Or if we're really being emphatic, dead. But here, it's dead. It's just that bit softer, which is not essential. There might be times when you'd say dead. But here, it feels perfect. Don't you see it? See what? The resemblance between us. This is The Parent Trap, directed by Nancy Myers in 1998. It's about identical twins who were separated at birth, one of them raised in England, one raised in America. They're both played by Lindsay Lohan. Well, it's rather picturesque, don't you think? That's quite good. She says rather instead of rather, but picturesque, don't you think? She's got the melody right, don't you think? That's something that's really different, the way that questions are phrased in England versus in America. We'd say, don't you think? Check for fruits, check for vegetables, go on. Go on. So the way she says that, O, oh, this really will tell you what class you're in here. The difference between O, oh, O, oh, and O, oh, somewhere in the middle. She's like, not super duper ancient air sort of a thing, but oh, American resonates right in the middle of your mouth. It's down a little bit lower. Now I'm talking about the resonance, that's different to pitch. Pitch is how actually high or low you're talking. And regardless of pitch, if you're placing the resonance up higher, up in here, it tends to sound more cerebral or intelligent. Well, I doubt it, but thanks, and thanks for bringing me here, Martin. Well, I doubt it, but thanks, and thanks for bringing me here, Martin. All those sounds are really riding up in here, as opposed to when she says doubt, and she's doing that nice soft T instead of doubt. I doubt it. It flows so smoothly. If I did it without the resonance, well, I doubt it, but thanks. <laughs> 
it just doesn't quite have that edge and that's something that can be challenging for people. I'll teach you to be me and you teach me to be you. Look, I can do you already. Yes, you want to know the difference between us? I have class and you don't. When she says class, if you say class without the resonance, it sounds like K-L-O-S-S, -S, class, R versus R. Almost put an R in it, class. He belongs to my friend, the one I was um, telling you about. I can't imagine how he got into my suitcase. One of the things that can be really tricky is to get can and can't down correctly. You have to be a bit careful with, with can't particularly because if it's too short, it can sound like a different word. So here she says, can't, the resonance is down, can't, instead of can't. Any of your pictures ruined? When she says, any of your pictures ruined, it is a British melody, but that probably wouldn't be the one you would use. You'd probably use, any of your pictures ruined. It's getting to know a lot of different melodic patterns that help. Stop, we've got a major problem. You're going to have to bring mother out here immediately. For her class, it would be more likely for her to say immediately, jit instead of immediately. She does get the D immediately if you were going to say it that way, but again, I would say immediately. He's always holding her hand and kissing her neck and waiting on her hand and foot. Waiting, what we call a flat T, waiting that we do in America all the time. In this class of England, you would say waiting. Some of the traps that Americans fall into when they're doing British accents, are they keep the same sort of a pattern and then they get it a bit off like this. I think sometimes when people are trying to get the resonance, they just raise the pitch up and that can have the effect of accidentally raising your resonance because you're tighter to create that higher pitch, but you really don't need to. You can speak with a lovely low voice and still have that resonance. Not the artful postures of love, but love that overthrows life. This is Shakespeare in Love, directed by John Madden in 1998. And we're looking at Gwyneth Paltrow's English accent. Unbiddable, ungovernable, like a riot in the heart, and nothing to be done, come ruin or rapture. Rapture. Gwyneth is doing a marvelous job of keeping the resonance there. Things like rapture has that glottal catch. I call it a catch, I distinguish between them because a glottal stop, it's so much harder, but rapture, it just gives it like this little nudge, rapture, love. And you hear the difference of, of keeping the resonance high, love, versus love. Not the artful postures of love. When she says, not the artful postures of love, that extra bit of breath, it's one of those subtle things that people can often miss, like I just said subtle, that extra little puff of air. It's not subtle, it's subtle. And it's part of what she's chosen for this character. It wouldn't be for every English accent, but it's really appropriate for what she's doing here. Playhouses are not for well-born ladies. Oh, I'm not so well-born. Well, money is the same as well-born. So you can see how when she says, I'm not so well-born, her lips are forward. And they need to be because this accent, as much as it's resonating up here, the sounds are really forward in the mouth. In American, we pull the lips back for things like born, so not so well born, it's going to be really forward. And you can't do that unless you're doing the posturing that she's got. What the director has chosen here is something that we can understand and identify with, that just doesn't sound contemporary. It's got a really sort of a timeless classical feel, which is really appropriate for the piece. Hi everyone, welcome to my wedding. <laughs> this is Imagine Me and You, directed by Ole Parker in 2005. We're looking at Piper Parabo's English accent. Rachel. I did your flowers. You did. My flowers are nice. The way she says Rachel, taking that L out and giving it a W or doing a bit of both, Rachel, that's really good. She says the flowers are nice. Flowers, that's really great. And then nice, she drops the resonance down a little bit, but it's pretty good. Nice versus nice. My ring. I was getting some of this patch crap and your wedding ring. It fell off. It can be challenging for people to get the off being very forward and she's really nailing it here. It fell off versus it fell off because in American you'd be used to doing your ah uh more open um, but she's really getting that off being forward with the lower lip. The old jokes really are the best aren't they? I'm wrong. Oh that's lovely. The way she says best, the best, with that little bit of um, extra 
oomph to it. That's some of the subtle things that people often miss. It's not not English to say best, but the way she says the best, you know, just eh, gives a little bit of a goose to it. Hi. Um, this is Luke. She's a florist. She says florist. You can say florist. You can also say florist. But that'd be a bit more upper class. So this works. It's similar to um, florist in the East Coast. Florist, florist. I invited someone to dinner Friday. That florist, loose. So now we've got florist, which feels a little more on. Same word. I would just do this one for the other one as well. Oh, great, I'll cook. Please don't. But please don't. Having it live up in here. This is more of a sort of upper middle class resonance up here. Don't. The lower the class, the more you bring it down, but the higher, the more you, you just smile through it. Please don't. There you go, it's totally on. There you go, it's totally on. So the way she does that, go, instead of go in American, or go in more of a Cockney, really tells her class, there you go, it's totally on. You can do all that smiling through your teeth. 400! 400? That's a really particular English melody, and it's not super common, so she's doing a, a really good job here of getting to know lots of different English melodies so she doesn't get stuck in one pattern. It's really connected with all of what she's going through emotionally here. I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something. Maybe tried on a few British accents of your own. And maybe next time you'll look at all the detail that goes into creating the voice of the character, including the accent.